The man was trapped in a white room. If he pressed the buttons on the wall, a random item would appear, like potted plants and vases. Each button had a different effect. If he kept pressing the button, items would keep appearing endlessly. He wondered what would happen if he kept pressing. But this time, his hand slipped and pressed another button. A small car came out of the wall and hit him in the leg. He wanted to use these items to escape, but none of them seemed to be useful. He felt anxious and hungry. He threw a balloon towards the wall, and it hit a button. The wall spewed out two pieces of sushi. It was a welcome surprise, but it's really weird to eat sushi without soy sauce. He tried pressing the button again, and the wall still spewed out sushi. He tried again, but it was still only sushi. Sushi piled high on a plate. The man was too hungry, so he decided to fill his stomach first. When he couldn't eat anymore, he pressed the button again. A bottle of soy sauce was thrown out. He became furious. Curious, feeling that the room was against him all the time. He tried the button on the floor, and suddenly a door appeared behind him. It must be the exit. He was overjoyed, but in his haste, he forgot which button it was. He had to try one by one. A black man ran out from the wall, and then ran into the opposite wall. He tried another button. A stream of water fell on his head. He's going insane. Finally, he pressed the right button. A door appeared on the wall. He turned around and ran towards the door, but when he was halfway there, the button recovered, and the exit disappeared. He caught his breath, pressed the button again, and ran backward at a faster pace, but it was still useless. He turned around and rushed with a squat start. However, the button recovered too fast. He's obviously not going to make it. He tried several methods, using a rope to shorten the distance, pushing a small car to carry himself, but nothing worked. Relying on speed was obviously ineffective. He brought the vase over here, and pressed it onto the button. The exit reappeared, but the force from the button was too strong. It topped the vase easily. To add weight to the vase, he decided to fill it with water. He pressed the button that had water before, and a stream of water came down. Unfortunately, the water landed precisely on his head. No matter how he moved, the water couldn't flow into the vase. The man tried different methods, but the water in the vase wasn't even enough for watering. Now he wanted to use sushi instead of water. He kept pressing the button repeatedly, and the sushi kept falling into the vase. But when it was full, he couldn't move the vase because it was too heavy. He reached inside with his hand, but the opening was too small to fit his hand. Luckily, there were chopsticks in the room. He used the chopsticks to pick the sushi out. Until he couldn't reach any sushi with chopsticks, he used all his strength and moved the vase back to the button. But he forgot which button was the exit again. He tried one by one, and when he pressed the wrong button, the black man appeared and kicked the vase. Then the man gave him a glance, and walked into the wall. But this kick broke the vase. All his efforts were in vain. The man was driven to madness. He tried the button higher up. A rope descended into the room. But soon, the rope disappeared on its own. He summoned the rope again, ran over and grabbed it. Then he returned to press the exit button. The door appeared on the wall. He gripped the rope tightly and swung over. Just in time, he arrived before the door closed. He went to pull the door handle, but the door didn't open. He needed a key to open it. The door was about to close. He bent down to run out, but was harshly hit on his back. He was so angry and kicked the wall in frustration. Unexpectedly, he accidentally hit a button. A key appeared in midair. He walked over to grab it, but it turned out that the key only existed for a short time. He picked up a piece of fish from a sushi and marked the key button. Then he summoned the rope, used inertia to swing over. Finally, he managed to get the key. Following the process before, he went to the door easily. He used the key to open the door, but the door still wouldn't open. He looked up, there was a password lock on it. He was running out of time, so he got out of this small space. Now, he had run out of patience. He picked up the plunger and threw it away. It hit a button. The black man walked out from the wall, gave him a glance, and then walked away. At that moment, he suddenly realized that there were three numbers on the man's head. It must be the code for the door. He followed the method before, twisted the numbers one by one. After a few tries, sure enough, the password was correct. He finally opened the door. The door was pulled open, but the exit behind him closed. Now he was trapped in this small space. He wanted to pull the door and walk out, but the space was too tight. He couldn't squeeze through. He got stuck behind the door. Now he was done for. Even the white room behind was out of reach. He crouched in the corner and cried. He started to miss the room behind him. Although he didn't have freedom, at least he didn't have to worry about food. And there were toys to kill time too. After reflecting for a moment, the man noticed a gap in the wall. He reached out and pulled it, and it turned out to be a sliding door. 
he walked out of the room, and outside was a long corridor. The corridor was flat and narrow, he ran desperately forward, and at the end, there was another gray room, the wall still had lots of buttons, and there was a bright light in the middle of the room. Looking up, there was an exit above his head. This time, he stepped on the buttons and climbed up, slowly and gradually, he climbed higher and higher. The exit became closer and closer. The space above was no longer affected by gravity. He floated quickly upwards. During this process, his hair grew long, and pure white feathers enveloped him. Finally, he flew out of the exit, bathing in a white light. That's the end of the film. It's a film that contained hidden metaphors. The pure white room represented a carefree childhood, where everything came easily. The corridor represented youth, firmly setting goals and moving forward. Climbing upwards in a darker room, represented reaching middle age, facing the heavy pressures of life and society. Ascending further represented entering old age, remaining calm and composed. As the old saying goes, one at 30 should be established, at 40 not confused, at 50 he knows his destiny. After experiencing various tribulations and tests, life would achieve intellectual freedom.